This recipe is actually a childhood favorite recipe of my husband's. He grew up eating this and he actually, I never even heard of it until I met him. And then he told me how to make it. My husband is half Romanian, half Polish with a little bit of Spanish blood there from Spain. So, he, um, this is a Romanian recipe. I'm actually going to show you. To start off, what you want to do is you want to stick a roll of cabbage. You want to stick it into the pot of water as it's starting to boil. I always get nervous sticking things into the big pot. I'm always afraid I'm going to burn my skin off with this hot water. But we are going to let that sit there for a good half hour. You know when it's ready to come off, when you start seeing it strip off itself, and you start seeing the lettuce get really thin and dark green. Because at that point, the lettuce will actually be able to stick to each, um, stick to itself. Hey guys, I'm back. So, what you're gonna want to do now? Want is you're to fry up your ground beef in the frying pan. You're gonna have it on medium heat. And by the time you're done with this, our cabbage should be ready. See how bouncy it is? It's just about ready to come out. You can actually see it fogging up the camera for all the steam. So, I will see you guys now while I'm frying up this beef. I do want to let you guys know that this is not an easy recipe to make. It is also not a quick recipe. This recipe takes about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to make just because there's so many complex units to it. Alright, so now that the beef is almost all browned up, we're just going to drizzle some olive oil. So you guys can see that on top of the ground beef. And we're going to mix it in with the ground beef. That's just going to add an extra little plate. Mix it with a flavor. Now, like I said, you're going to be putting a lot of salt and pepper in. It's just for flavor. So you're going to put it separately and you're going to mix it up. I'm going to do a little stir there. And then you're going to go ahead and put your black pepper in. And then you're going to go ahead and stir that up. So next thing I want to do is we want to shave off the garlic. And take off all that skin. And then we're going to dice it up very, very thin. So next thing I want to do is we want to shave off the garlic. take off all that skin and then we're going to dice it up very very thin so we are only going to take off the first layer and then we're going to cut down into the garlic you know it's good when you can see the yellow look at how pretty that is So then we're just going to pop that out. <laughs> Looks like an actual butt.
normally it's a lot easier to cut out the garlic, but for some reason this one's going to be a little bit of an issue, so I have to peel it out even, even further. But it'll be worth it, and you guys see how delicious this is going to be. This is definitely giving me Shrek vibes. I haven't seen the movie Shrek. I don't, you don't know what you Move them, bro. Hide. Move them on. Head them up. Head them up. Move them on. Move them on. Head them up. Roll hide. Light them up. Move them on. Hit them up. Hit them up. Move them on. Roll hide. Knock them out. Pat them so now that we have these little things that look like teeth, these are actually the garlic. Mirandai set up really fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and just throw that in. And you're gonna want a big mixing bowl because there's a lot you're gonna be mixing into this beef. I'm just taking all the pieces off the plate here. Okay, I'm just gonna mix it up. Now the next thing you're going to want is a red and yellow pepper. You can use a green too, but red and yellow is enough. This is more for color and for appeal than for actual taste. I find the easiest way to take the seeds out of the peppers is to just cut the core out. And then you're left with an empty pepper. It's actually perfect if you're making stuffed peppers too. So you just I want to point this out. You do want it to be a decent sized chunk. Just because you want to be able to see the pepper and actually taste the crunch when you crunch down into it. You don't want it to be tiny and diced up like the garlic. So then we're just going to go ahead and dump this into the beef with the onions and the garlic as well. I don't know why I keep saying onions. I think it's because I'm not used to cooking with garlic. It's not often that I make this. I make it probably about once a year. So then yeah. you're just going to go ahead and repeat that same step with the red. So once again, you're just going to dump the red peppers in. And then you're just going to mix it around. See all these beautiful colors that have come through, guys? So this next step can be rather long, or it can be really quick. I have chosen to take the quicker route, and just pick up the minute rice. I'm going to stick in the microwave for a minute. And so then the I'll next see step, you can do this in one of two ways, again. You can stick the barbecue sauce straight into the beef with peppers and garlic or you can mix it up in your rice. I am choosing to mix it up in the rice that way it's not as messy. And I do want to let you guys know the only reason why the barbecue sauce is in the recipe in the first place is because we had to make our own variation of the cabbage rolls considering the fact that my husband does not and I mean hates white rice will not eat it, will not touch it. So I had to find a way to put it in there with not put, without putting it in there. So I one day made it with the barbecue sauce and he ate and it And this up. is also why it gets mixed in with the rice. Because if he sees one piece of white rice, he'll eat around it, but he will not eat the white rice. This is white rice with barbecue sauce. Yes, yeah, so that's how much barbecue sauce I had to put in. Not exactly healthy, but the rest of the dish is healthy, so he will eat it. And he will actually enjoy it and love it. So I'm just going to dump that in. As you can see, it's white rice on the bottom. So I'm just going to... Right there. Stir it around. Make sure that there is no white rice. I can see a little bit of white rice, so I do have to put more sauce in. Mm 
basically all I'm doing is painting the white rice so that way he'll eat it. going to put your mixture in. You want to make sure it's really full because otherwise all you're going to taste is the cabbage. Come on, cabbage might taste good. Well, come on. You can help me fold up the cabbage. Here comes everybody's little buddy. Whoa, yummy. You want to try it? I thought you were going to say that and that's what I was about to say now. <laughs> Oh, I said you could fold it. I'm over here folding it. What is folding okay. it? So you gotta fold it up. Go ahead. Fold it up like you fold your baby in a blanket. Okay. Oh, careful. Yeah, maybe mommy will do that. Okay, can I? Yeah, I'll go back to your video. Give him some fun. Like I said, guys. So like I was saying, guys, this does get very, very messy. I don't know how much I had the last video, but what we did is we just wrapped it up like a baby in a blanket. And then we ended up putting it in a glass casserole dish. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to put some cheese on top. Here's some hot sauce because Romanians love their hot sauce. Don't ask me why. I couldn't care for hot sauce, but Romanians love the hot sauce. So. Oh. I now you just want to put a little bit of marinara sauce. And then you just want to preheat your stove to 350. Yeah. And my battery's oh, about to die on this camera. Me, so you just want to um, cook it for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then you take it out, and I'll let you guys see what it looks like when it's taken. So I just wanted to show you guys how the uh, patrols came out before Rodney comes home and digs in. So I did put some extra um, stuffing here, if you want to call it that. But the mixture goes inside the cab rolls. Because he will ask, <laughs> is there any more of that mix? But yeah, this is it. It's so good and so beautiful. I love the colors. I can really cook.